What's up, everyone? All right, well, sitting down here, Monday morning, back in the saddle, not much moving, but we did have the biggest percentage gainer so far today, I lag up 80%. It's a dead cat bounce. Big sell off over the last few days, all the way down to under $3, and then this curl back up. So because it sold off so much, the curl back up puts it up 80% on the day, uh, but uh, most of us, by the time we sat down, it was already up 60, 70%. It's continued a little bit higher. Uh, and I was able to carve out a little bit of profit on it, but not an easy day. We'll go over it during the recap as always. Uh, I think right now the game plan is gonna have to be that um, when there's opportunities to try to hit them hard, be aggressive, and let that profit tide me over for a couple days when it gets cold. Last week, there were really only two good days out of three. This week, you know, maybe the same. Uh, the, the previous week was actually similar to last week. So, you know, it's like there'll be one or two stocks each week that seem to be easier for me to trade and I can do okay on. And then the rest of the week is just dead or slow. And so I have to be really careful not to dig myself a hole when it's slow. Uh, so I can just let those green days tide me over and then be really conservative when things just don't feel quite right. And today they didn't really feel that great. Uh, the two trades I took were both on um, leading gappers. Uh, they were both in the top five on leading gappers today, but neither of the trades really worked out that well. It just felt like, it really didn't even quite feel like it was worth the risk. It was just sort of like, oh, this is just like stepping up to the plate and swinging and just like barely getting a base hit, barely. And that doesn't feel that great. Uh, of course, you know, like with baseball, you can't just skip your turn at bat. You gotta, you know, you gotta take a swing. And so with trading, you can just choose to sit out. You can choose to not trade at all, sit on the sidelines, or you can choose kind of the way I am to trade a bit more conservatively, take a swing, see if you can get on on base and get a couple of trades. You know, but but set the expectations, adjust expectations to the market we're in. And I think that that's one of the biggest takeaways of trading in a bear market is just the reality that you have to adjust expectations. This is not the market that you're gonna get huge home runs. It's, I think at some point we will probably get something that surprises everyone. Unfortunately, the liquidity on it will probably be low because traders just won't be expecting it. There won't be enough volume. And so getting in, getting out will be more difficult. And that's kind of what we saw on UC, USEA over the last couple of weeks. It did go up, but it really wasn't that easy to trade. So in any case, um, this is the ebb and the flow of the market. And so, you know, we have ups and we have downs. You just have to ride those waves and uh, we're still in a down wave right now. But uh, you know, getting through it. So anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed the recap. As always, reminder, trading is risky. My results are not typical and most beginner traders do lose money. So make sure you trade cautiously, practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line. Don't try to blindly follow me or anyone else. And I'll see you back here first thing for the morning show tomorrow morning. All right, I hope you enjoy the recap and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so um, 10 a.m., throwing in the towel here at the end of the 30-minute opening range with very small gains. Might as well just call it a break-even day, but uh, I took two trades on the two, two of the leading gappers. So this morning, I sat down on the early side, but we didn't have really... Uh, a very clean gap scanner, even from pretty early this morning. Leading gap or QD, higher float, had already been pulling back pre-market, no interest, also a cheaper stock. HKD, uh, this one ended up right into the open showing as a gap, but I uh, didn't even notice it earlier pre-market. It wasn't really a big gap or pre-market until like it kind of popped up right there. Anyways, no trades on that. ILAG was our first leading gapper that I thought was worth watching and I made 350 bucks on it uh, but I just had a hard time with it and the fact is I traded it um, two or three times last week and I lost money each time I traded it so this morning I was like I don't know if I really trust it but pre-market in my watch list I said 327 is a breakout point a pivot and if it breaks over that your next targets 335 but I said it's only eight cents so we're not talking about a lot of potential on it now an entry at 335 for the breakthrough high a day in a bear market on a setup that's a dead cat bounce, you know, it's, I, I don't know if I can trust it. I'm afraid it'll go be like right into a wall of sellers and it's gonna be a trap. Uh, in fact, it ended up opening very strong and it ended up squeezing in these first five minutes uh, really nicely. 
I got in at $3.47 for the break of $3.50. It proceeded to drop to $3.34 after I got in. So I was down like 12 cents a share. And I was thinking that was a stupid trade. You know, the stock is choppy. You've already lost on it a couple times. Um, but it did end up coming back up. It broke through 350. And as it broke through that level, I was like, you know what? Take it off the table. This is dumb. I don't want I don't want to overstay my welcome. Um, this is a waste of time. So it ended up going up to a high of 393, which is higher than I expected. It then broke pretty nicely here. But this breakout was tough because it popped up. Uh, really quickly off of 375 up to 395 so it was already extended 20 cents then it broke through 395 and went up to 413 an entry at 395 398 would have been risky being that it was extended on the one minute so anyways didn't trade that didn't feel i had at that point any cushion to take the risk on it uh, i'm glad to see it's moving higher and if we see that more consistently i'll start being more aggressive but having been read on it twice last week uh, or three times whenever it was i don't remember I was just thinking, I don't think I can trust this stock. So that was ILAG. The second stock I trade was ADN. And on this one, sort of a similar setup. It broke pre-market and I didn't trade it. Um, but I did end up taking this trade right before the open, first five minute candle to make a new high, long at 360. It popped up to 363. It didn't break and I sold at 358 or something like that. Lost $87 on it. Uh, and just cut the loss really quickly. That was the right move, breakout or bailout. So I was down uh, $87 on that one. That was my first trade of the day. And then when I got into ILAG and I was down 12 cents, I was obviously red on the day and was thinking this is, I probably shouldn't have traded at all today because nothing really looked that great. So once that went back to green, that was sort of my cue to say, you know what, shut it down. This isn't your day. It's just not worth it. Whether I'm down 100, 500, or I'm up 100 or 500, it's just not worth, it just doesn't feel like it's worth it. You know, some days are hot and some days are not, and today did not feel hot enough, which surprised me a little bit because the overall market, you know, was gapping up this morning. Uh, so we had a nice gap in the overall market ahead of um, some of the earnings from uh, the banks. We have uh, a number of earnings this week that are, uh, people are gonna be watching. Goldman Sachs, this one, uh, you've got this, uh, the market's responding uh, well. Um, and you also have Bank of America, Bank of America uh, earning quite a bit on, uh, what was it, 20%? No, I have to double check it. Um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I was gonna say, um, I think they said they earned like 12 billion in, in, on, on interest. Um, but I'm not seeing it's it's going to be buried in here somewhere. Um, so net interest income 12 billion, an increase of 22 percent, uh, which is good, driven by higher interest rates. Right. So um, that's to be expected. They're going to make more on the higher interest rates. Uh, but uh, they also noted that their um, earnings were, I believe, a bit lower than uh, certainly than last year and, and a bit lower than the Wall Street expectation but I can't find that right now either anyways I was looking at it earlier um, so let's see whatever anyways if you're interested you can um, you can of course look into this but so we've got some earnings that are coming out this week uh, which are probably going to the market's watching closely uh, and, and so we'll see how that affects the overall market. Overall market right now, the S&P 500 at least, is kind of at the top of this little range that we've been in. 393 high, 362 low, but support around 372. If we can get through 393, then we're starting to of course look at 400, over 400, we're looking back to the 200 moving average which is a level that a lot of uh, technical traders will be watching closely. The IWM, Russell 2000, small cap index, this is obviously down as well. Although it's worth noting that through 2021, it was more or less flat and 2021 was still a great year. But 
you know, the market's down, IWM is down, and uh, this is a headwind for sure for small cap traders like myself. So uh, we'll see uh, what the market gives us in the coming weeks as we get through the rest of July and then get into August. And then of course, the uh, end of third quarter in September, and then we'll have October, November, December, fourth quarter, and hopefully we see some momentum because typically we do. So I'm hopeful that we end up finishing the year strong. We had a pretty good start, all things considered. It's been a little slow in the middle, but I'm hoping it picks up going into the end of the year. That, that would be a nice way to finish the year. That's optimistic, I suppose, but that's kind of what I'm uh, thinking about. So, you know, in terms of um, day trading, it's going to be day, day to day. You know, some days um, we will hopefully see some opportunities and we'll see some things pop up and we'll get some trades. And so it's probably going to be, you know, there'll be one or two days where we get some good opportunities and then it'll just be dead for another four or five days. So making the most when we see them. I had a couple of good days last week. I had a good day on Tuesday. I had a good day on Friday. Monday was slow. Wednesday and Thursday were red days. But there were small red days and I was able to make it back pretty quickly uh, with a good day on Friday and, and, you know, small green day today, whatever. But it's definitely time to be conservative and sit on the sidelines until things are hot. So that's going to be my continued approach right now as we kind of navigate the bear market. But, you know, coming out on top in the bear market, just not with as much as I would if things were obviously really hot. So reminders always, my results are not typical. Trading is risky. A lot of beginner traders lose money and there's no guarantee you'll find success whether you trade on your own or you'll learn from me. So make sure you take it slow and I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. Hopefully we see some um, good stocks on a gap scanner. We get some more opportunities. Midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, I like to be able to have a nice cushion and then I can scale back on Friday going into the weekend. So that's the plan right now. All right, I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. I hope you really enjoyed that video and make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers this year, but we won't get there without your help. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button.